Yes, guys, welcome back to another video here on the Andy Hashtag One channel. Today is another video in the Goalkeeping Week in Review series. It's the fourth video that we're looking at where I'm joined by Twitter extraordinaire John Harrison to talk about a performance of the week. John, how are you doing this week? Yeah, good. Not too bad at all. You look like you've had a haircut during lockdown. Yeah, no, indeed. My fiance gave me a quick trim because yeah, it had been it had been a while. I think I last had it cut in January or something. So yeah, needed to sharpen up. You're looking fresh, John. Uh, so for those of you who aren't following John already, his uh, Twitter handle is up there in the corner. Make sure you go and follow John. If you're enjoying these videos that we're putting together, make sure you like it, make sure you subscribe, and make sure you also comment below if you'd like us to see a goalkeeper in focus, if you'd like to do a slightly different video tiering system. I'm not sure you. Give us some ideas and we'll see if we can pull the content together. Uh, so in terms of the goalkeeping week that we've just seen, I suppose the first thing i say is I'm a Wolves fan. Uh, I didn't watch the Wolves game, but I did pick up on Twitter about the injury to Rui Patricio. Didn't look a good one from what I gather. So Rui Patricio, make sure you get better soon. Another head injury for Wolves, unfortunately. But John, who are we going to talk about today? So this week, we're going to talk about Lucas Fabianski and his performance against Man United. He put in a great performance and was unlucky to be on the on the losing side, 1-0 through, through an own goal. Um, yeah, that's what we're going to discuss now. So Lucas Fabianski, uh, he's been in England for a, a long time, actually, now. It's got to be around 15, 16 years. He first moved across to Arsenal, but he didn't really get a run of games he was there for seven years uh, 32 games I think he played says uh, my notes in front of me he was always seemed to be a backup and number two Almunia was in front of him Volchek Szczesny as well uh, and it wasn't until I felt he got to Swansea which really kind of imposed himself as a Premier League goalkeeper and then he's grown into this you know he's been a good goalkeeper I think for both Swansea and West Ham has been a, a regular number one yeah indeed um, ever since he sort of managed to get his move away from Arsenal, I think he's been a, a top, above average, consistent Premier League goalkeeper. So if we look at his sort of save percentage minus expected save percentage, so how well he's performing versus what you'd expect from an average Premier League goalkeeper, he's sort of consistently saving Swansea uh, and then now West Ham, like a few goals a year. And in fact, his, his first season at West Ham, I think he was one of the top three shot stoppers in the, in, in the country in terms of the save percentage minus expected save percentage metric. So I think he's definitely, once he's moved away from Arsenal, he has proven he can be a, a solid and consistent Premier League shot stopper. Yeah, he was obviously relegated with Swansea, but then made his move to West Ham. I mean, £7 million for a goalkeeper of his quality seems like an absolute bargain. And West Ham, you've got to say, this year they're pushing for Champions League football, which I think is a surprise to most people, maybe even West Ham fans as well. I know some West Ham fans who would absolutely be chomping at the bit to see uh, Champions League football being played at the Olympic Stadium. Uh, how much, how important has Fabianski been to West Ham's season this year? Yeah, no, I think he's, I think he's been vital, and I think whenever he doesn't play, you can tell that they, that they do miss him. So, in terms of the of the shot stopping stats this year, his save percentage minus expected save percentage is on two point one percent plus. So he's saving them a few goals every hundred shots, and I think that puts him about yeah tenth in the Premier League. So he's been a solid above average um, shot stopper but as we're going to discuss in this video that isn't the strength where he sort of gives his biggest assets to West Ham uh, and that's in his shot prevention he actually allows West Ham to concede fewer shots than they would otherwise if they had a had an average goalkeeper yeah I mean just talking about shots if you just to look at the highlights back from the game you'd see two big saves that he made first one from Greenwood uh, and the second one was from our oh, Bruno Fernandes just outside the box that we're going to chat about. But like you say, there was more to Fabianski's game than just shot stopping. Yeah, indeed. He's a really active goalkeeper and he always wants to help his defence out. So his ability to sweep up behind his back line and the ability for, of him to claim crosses and high balls uh, to take pressure off West Ham is a, is a really big asset. So I mean, just talking about that first save from Mason Greenwood, Man United cut West Ham apart really through the middle of the pitch uh, it's gone through, which is actually very, I'm surprised at that from a David Moyes type uh, defensive structure that you'd expect. But uh, it's gone from De Gea into Fred, into Fernandez, into Greenwood, more or less central, central. And he's just off centre to the right hand side. He's under pressure from Craig Dawson, but he's, he's kind of chopped back in onto his left foot. And he's taken a shot, he's looking for that bottom right hand corner would be for Fabianski, who's managed to get his... I think it was described in commentary as a big right hand onto the onto the ball, which forced it onto the post and wide. 
what what did you pick up through that save? Yeah, so first of all, it was, a, it was an absolutely wonderful save. And I think it's not a save that all goalkeepers could make or that gets made that, that regularly. Um, so the things I picked up were his sort of speed and precision of his footwork. So as the ball was progressing, as you said, through midfield and across to, to Greenwood, Fabianski had to make a lot of corrections to his, to his position. And he did this really cleanly with what we'd call in the goalkeeping world, like pulsing feet. And as the shot was coming in, there was no big jump into his set. He carried on these pulsing feet and was sort of bouncing on the balls of his feet, knowing that he wouldn't be off the ground for a long period of time. Because the longer you're off the ground, the, the sort of less time you have, because you can only move once you're on the ground and you're reacting. So if you're pulsing, you're sort of almost constantly in touch with the ground, so you can push off at any moment. Um, so that was a, a really good thing, his tidy footwork. And then also I picked up on his, his set position. He was nice and neutral, um, quite crouched forwards, arms in a nice place where if the shot was high, he could get there. If the shot was low, he could also back himself to, to get there. He seemed really sort of confident in his position. It was, there was no gambling. He wasn't watching Greenwood and being like, oh, I'm worried. Is he going to cut it back here? Do I need to go here? Do I need to go there? He was staying central, staying set and being like, I believe my reactions will be able to make this save. Can you try and beat me? And I, I really like that about it. And then finally, I really like the sort of shot stopping technique selection he used. So rather than going for a, like a foot save, he realized it was outside of his foot's reach. And rather than going for sort of a power step dive where like you get your foot out, plant it and push off, he realized he wouldn't have enough time for that. So instead, he just swept his legs out from underneath him and just got a big, strong hand to it because he realised the ball was going to be within his reach. And that was the quickest way he could get down to the ball. And yeah, if you look at the screenshots we've got, you can see he goes very quickly from being in an upright set position to bang, down on the ground, hand there. And you can imagine if he tried to get a step in or if he tried to use his foot, uh, there's no way he's going he's gonna to get there in time. And it's just a great way of swinging your sort of centre of mass out from underneath you and just dropping down as quickly as possible. So yeah, him using that technique made a very difficult save look almost um, almost straightforward for him. Yeah, just going back to that first point you were making about positioning, I'll just say about, I mean, we will be putting screenshots up all the time. Unfortunately, we can't play the clip because of copyright, obviously. But I mean, going back to that first point you're making about positioning, what, what I really liked, I think it's also a point we spoke about with Martinez last week, was how his positioning was taken up because... Or well, partly because, anyway, uh, the the positioning that Craig Dawson was at was in in that particular time when he was taking the shot. He, Greenwood, one then wasn't able to pull the ball back into what would be Fabianski's left hand side. He only really had half, maybe just over the half of the goal to aim at, which meant the ball was either becoming at Fabianski or, or to Fabianski's right hand side. And I thought he he took his positioning off both the ball, the attacker, and the defensive positioning really well in order to make him have that save. Yeah. So the second big save from the highlights uh, that he made was um, from Bruno Fernandes. So the ball was in that United attacking down the right-hand side, it was in the box. So he seemed to not really have great possession about that particular instance in time. The ball came out to Van um, Wan-Bissaka, who then set up Fernandes, who must have been 24-ish yards out by the naked eye, who's then hit a ball through bodies. There must have been eight, ten bodies through there, and Fabianski again got his right hand to it. A save that Gary Neville said in the commentary he expected him to make. What did you make of that one? Well, yeah, yeah I, don't think, I don't think it was as, as difficult a save as the Greenwood one, but I think saying it's a save you expect him to make is a little bit harsh. It's hardly like a P-roller down the centre that he's just scooping up. It is, again, a really good save, and again, he uses a very similar technique. He sees the ball late because, as he said, it's come through a lot of bodies and he realises, oh, it's within my reach, just sweep my legs away, get a hand there. And the, the one thing I didn't really like about this is his parry location. So um, if you look, he, he, he doesn't even parry it out for a corner. He manages to flick it st sort of straight down the, the touch line and Kufal gets there and clears it up the field. So he managed to just parry it to a completely safe location. The amount of times I imagine a similar shot from Bruno Fernandes because of its sort of angle and how central it was and sort of fading into that corner. How many times we've seen a keeper parry that straight back out? I think, yeah, it was a save maybe you'd expect him to make. Uh, the sort of standard expected goals models have it as a sort of 0.22%, uh, uh, not 22% chance of, of, of going in. Um, so, like, you see them go in a fifth of the time, but it's still a good save. But I think, yeah, the most impressive thing was was his parry location of not putting it back in for a rebound of guiding it out almost for a, almost for a throw in before Kufal cleared it. Yeah, I mean, we like to. I, I really like the work that you do on, on Twitter and the, the use of statistics 
within um, the analysis of goalkeepers. But I think it's worth noting at this point that not all of the models can exactly predict everything that's within that, because we've spoken about it's coming through bodies. But there are certain things that the models might not necessarily pick up to make it an easier or harder save, because that, for me, came through, like I say, a number of bodies. Which, and you mentioned you saw it late. I'm not sure how late he would have actually seen it for there, but then it, it's not a 22-yard shot, essentially. It's then a, you know, it might have been a 16 or a 14-yard shot. Of then also, you don't pick up those cues of the actual strike itself, so you wouldn't be able to see his hip position, his body position, where he's caught the ball, those kind of um, little nuances that, that you do to subliminally pick up when someone strikes a ball in order to then inform your next action, your next decision. You don't pick up any of those. You see a ball blind that's just come through a load of bodies that you've seen like that you've got to react to. So that that's the reason why I'd say it's it's a harder shot than a 22% um, stats yeah. model that's coming out. Yeah, no, indeed, I completely agree. It's one of those things that the statistics are far better than they used to be, but I still, yeah, would take them with a sort of an error bar range. So maybe plus or minus 10%. So because like you say, it's, it's going to know the sort of the rough number of players behind the ball, it's going to know where the ball was struck from and where it, where it ended up, and it's like power, but it's not going to know those little details of, oh, was there a person sliding across? Was there someone in his line of view? Was someone moving across in an offside position? All those little things the model won't pick up on um, because it's just not data that's, that's logged. So, yeah, definitely when we do quote these numbers, they're much better than just quoting save percentage or number of saves and things like that. But yeah, you're saying quite right. should have saved it. Exactly. Or just saying he should have saved it. You can sort of at least roughly quantify. And I think it's nice to see that the majority of the time it sort of lines up with what you see with your eyes. So, yeah, the, the Greenwood shot's probably a slightly better save than the Bruno shot. And I think most people, given the distances, one's from yeah, 24 yards, like you say, the other's from about 16. Um, and they're quite similar locations, quite similar powers. It, it, it roughly checks out. And I think it's a useful thing to sort of guide the discussion. But yeah, like you say, it shouldn't be the be all and end all. And we shouldn't be going down to the, I quote the number because it's there, but yeah, going down to 22% exactly is probably yeah, a little far-fetched. And it should be more thinking about it as it's between 10 and 30% would probably be a more a more accurate way of, of discussing this. Yeah, I feel you've had that conversation many times on Twitter G, uh, in response to one of your threads to a fan of a team. <laughs> yeah. The third thing that we wanted to talk about Fabianski is shot prevention. Now, this is something I'm really interested in because this is where I think goalkeepers don't necessarily get, you know, praised for praised for saves, praised for taking difficult crosses, potentially, or praised for not taking difficult crosses or, or maybe not not praised is the right word maybe it's actually you don't put yourself in the firing line essentially if you're going to be stuck to your line versus coming out uh, and taking crosses and this is where it's a model which can take all those uh, those decisions am I coming am I staying in order to see then actually what the next step might have been uh, that's really badly described example of this but just talk us through what you've picked up from Fabianski for the, for the Man United game in terms of some of the actions that he did, which haven't been picked up as part of the highlights reel. Yeah, so indeed. So I've, I've built a model, like you say, because it's really important to not just take into account shot stopping because preventing a shot can often be just as important as, as actually saving it. So yeah, I've, I've built a model which takes into account basically every through ball that gets played in that the keeper comes and sweeps up and every cross that goes in the box that the keeper comes and claims, that can be assigned an expected goals prevented value. So you can imagine... I don't know, someone gets through balled in one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. The goalkeeper reads it, rushes out and dives at it just before the striker gets a touch and catches it. If the goalkeeper has stayed in his line, that striker will get off a shot that's worth, I don't know, 0.4 XG. So we'll go in 40% of the time. But that then doesn't get picked up because the keeper swept it and just caught it in his hands. No shot ever happened. But what my model will do will assign to that goalkeeper uh, 0.4 XG prevented due to his action. And yeah, the Fabianski game, like you said, was incredible so overall he prevented 2.21 expected goals happening against West Ham so his sweeping and cross claiming according to my model prevented them conceding almost two whole goals uh, well over two whole goals so yeah the, the first few I just want to want to highlight are a few of his sweeps that prevented clear 1v1 opportunities so 
there's the first one on, on, on Bruno Fernandes. So Rashford gets the ball on the on the on Man United's left wing and tries to play a through ball into into Bruno. And Fabianski's outrageously quick off his line and manages to nick there just before Bruno gets a toe to it and catch the ball at his feet. And yeah, my model had this as preventing a chance worth 0.48 xG. So basically a 50-50 of a goal or not a goal. And Fabianski stopped him even getting the shot off. And I think it's, yeah, wonderful speed off his line, but also great bravery to be diving in at feet and making sure he secured the ball. And he didn't sort of back out and end up sort of palming it anywhere. He fully secured it and caught it and there was no no possibility of a rebound. Um, the, the sort of second one, that, that, that he prevented was with Scott McTominay. And this was more of a reaction one where I think you'd see so many keepers stay on their line and not go for it and end up conceding a goal. So what happened here was, I think there's a cross comes in and Greenwood just flicks it with the outside of his boot. And then the ball just starts rolling past the West Ham defender into a gap where Scott McTominay is trying to attack. And then Fabianski just leaps out off his line and smothers the ball and jumps on it before McTominay can get a foot in. And, um, you can imagine that if he hadn't done that, McTominay's just toe poking it in from, yeah, whatever, five or six yards away from goal and has a really high chance of scoring. This model that you're talking about here is rewarding positive actions, positive goalkeeping. Yeah, indeed. It basically, it wants to, yeah, wants to reward goalkeepers for, for stopping shots happening because so many times the goalkeeper will stay on the line and someone scores and you're like, oh, he could never save that. That was, that was from close range. He just smashed it in. And it's like, correct. He, he could never save that. He's, but what he could have maybe done was prevented it from ever happening by being proactive. And I think, yeah, the very best keepers now in the, in the Premier League are the, are the proactive ones who can see a situation and realise, I can't stay on my line here and try and react to this shot. I need to try and pounce on that ball and grab it before a shot even, even happens. And I think, like you say, the goalkeepers need to be praised for this because this is a big part of how well a defence does. Like when you're looking at, title winning teams and things like that they're going to be conceding few goals and that's not always because they've got an amazing shot stopper it could just be they've got an amazing shot preventer and that he just isn't letting any shots come in on goal so I think it's definitely something especially for scouts and yeah academy coaches and things like that it's some an aspect that if you work on it sufficiently I think it can be close to being as important as shot stopping yeah because this model also takes into account is cross claiming you were talking about again something that Fabianski was very positive about during the game Man United. Yeah, no, indeed. So if we have a look at a few of these crosses, so um, the first one I want to highlight is a really nice low cross in. Um, I think by Mason Greenwood. Yeah, he gets down the side, crosses it in low, and it looks like it's going to be a tap in for for, for James uh, right at the near post. And Fabianski gets off his line quickly and catches it. Just his feet. I think he spills it a little bit and then pounces on it before anyone else can get there. And if you look at the screenshots, it would be a if how many times have we seen a keeper across coming in, a keeper just turns and then bang, it's past them because it's a shot from three or four yards. But Fabianski here realizes it's coming across, he's got to go get there, dives on it. And my model actually has this as him preventing an 82% chance shot. And yeah, if you if you see the screenshots, you'll see that you can imagine if Fabianski doesn't come out for that. James is just going to toe poke it into basically an open goal and there's very little chance of a defender getting a block on it or um, or Fabianski saving it. Yeah, just, can say, just looking at the graphic that we've just put up now, the stars is what we're looking at here. So the white stars are where he's taken a clean catch and he's kept pos possession from there as well. So these are the, the one, two, three, the four that are, you know, they've kept possession, he's taken a catch, he's under pressure, he's done incredibly well. And the yellow is a punch which has gone for absolute miles as well. So although they haven't retained possession, it's absolutely cleared the danger that was there. So there's five positive actions. Indeed, 2.2 unexpected goals prevented from ever happening due to his positive actions. And yeah, I think you're about to, to highlight that there, there is one point where his action actually makes a goal more likely for, for Man United. And this is a, a sort of mid-height cross from, from James that he comes to try and catch to prevent Rashford, who's bombing in at the back post, potentially getting a, getting a shot off. And he actually ends up sort of overstretching for it. And he just flicks his fingertips and he ends up dropping it um, about, yeah, eight or nine, eight or nine yards out. And yeah, my model picks up on this because like you said, we have, um, if you take a clean catch, you've completely prevented the chance. And whatever the XG of that was, you've saved for your team. Whereas if you punch it, there's going to be, wherever that punch lands, there's going to be some inherent um, 
XG you've sort of given your opposition. So if you punch it miles out of the box, there may be like a 1% chance that that's going to then come back and end up in a goal during that sequence. But obviously, if you drop it in your six-yard box, suddenly you're potentially creating a huge chance for the opposition. And in this case, actually, it only just works out against Fabianski. So my model has him preventing about a, um, a 10% chance for Rashford, and then he gifts to my United about an 18% chance. But luckily, there was no one in the box to take it. But I think this is an important thing in, in goalkeeping in general, that if you're going to be an aggressive goalkeeper and you're going to come for a lot of shot, a lot of crosses and a lot of through balls, you will eventually misread a few and drop a few. But we can see from this game from Fabianski and yeah, from the, from the graphic we've got, his decisions were overwhelmingly positive and were overwhelmingly good for West Ham. He, he net prevented over two expected goals. So even though he has dropped one, I think it's very vital that we don't sort of destroy goalkeepers in the, in the media and things like that for dropping crosses and messing up because often. Sometimes, yeah, maybe, maybe they are um, dropping too many or whatever, but often if they're doing that, they're a very positive goalkeeper and actually preventing their team conceding far more goals than the few you drop when someone taps in a season. Yeah, I absolutely agree with that. I mean, we're seeing um, errors leading to goals become a more prevalent stat than it has been. And the goalkeeper that actually comes to mind when you're talking through that, I mean, I'm a little bit older than you, John, uh, is David James. David James got labelled as, as someone who might be, who might have an error in him generally from crossing as well. But he was a, such a positive goalkeeper. I would love to see this stat for him versus the uh, the amount of goals that he apparently gave up because of his aggressive goalkeeper. I'm pretty sure that it would be so far positive in one way. Um, it could finally put a, you know it could put put a lot of conversation on the table about how good goalkeepers are and the various different how rounded goalkeepers are and the stats to back that up yeah no indeed and I think it's um I think it's a really important statistic to sort of try and get out there in the, in, the, in the public sphere more because it's one of those that you can often just look at a goalkeeper especially in the in the sort of public sphere with the publicly available data we have and say oh they're a shot stopper this is how good they are they're ranked fourth in shot stopping in the Premier League from whatever model stats bomb however you want to talk about Therefore, that, they're the fourth best goalkeeper in the Premier League. But no, it doesn't work like that. As you said, Like if you're a really good shot preventer, it doesn't actually matter that much how good your shot stopping is. As long as it's not woefully bad, if you're an amazing shot preventer, you could actually be the most rounded goalkeeper in the, in the Premier League. And I think actually Edison is a really good candidate for that. Like His shot stopping is normally always about just, just above average for, for Premier League. But his shot preventing, the amount of crosses he's coming for, at least for the sort of one and a half years I've, I've run my model on Premier League keepers, Edison's always up there for like the most crosses come for and the most through ball sweeps and preventing the most um, the most chances. So a lot of people question his shot stopping and he has made a few big mistakes in the Champions League as, and such and Man City have been knocked out because of his shot stopping. But his shot preventing is so good that actually for a team like Man City who have so much of the ball, yeah. it's probably better for them to have a shot preventer than it is for them to have a shot stopper because people are playing them on the counter attack, just lumping it over the top, putting crosses in. So he's probably going to face a lot more crosses and through balls than the, av than the average keeper would versus the amount of shots he'll face. Yeah, that, that's a really good point to end on actually as well because we're, we're nearing our time, John. But the that point of really, I think what you're trying to say there is getting a goalkeeper that fits the overall playing style of the team. And Edison is absolutely perfect for that due to what he does both on and off the ball. Uh, uh, yeah, can't say any more than that. I think, John, thank you very much for your time. It's an absolute pleasure to chat to you. Uh, I feel this is like a mini um, CPD course for me, continuous professional <laughs> development, in order to understand more about stats, goalkeeping, and all the rest of it. Really enjoying our chats and how insightful they are. And of course, your Twitter feed as well. So, just another little plug if you're not following John already and you've made it to the end of the video, make sure you do go check out. John, his Twitter handle is up there and it's also linked in the description below. John, thank you very much. Same time next week. Yep, indeed. Cheers. Looking forward to it already. Thanks for watching, everyone. Make sure you remember, like the video, subscribe for more and comment down below if you want to see us do any particular videos that you'd like to see. Thanks for watching. See you all soon.